good day to all. For today's video, we will conduct weekly testing of safety equipment on board. I will show you some of those. To ensure functionality of the equipments on board, must be tested regularly so that during emergency, these can function accordingly. And then buy that you can sleep well. 15 ppm alarm simulation test of bilge MON488. Press the enter button and hold. Then press the board button to simulate. Then press the plus button to increase it ppm. Until more than 15 ppm, then alarm trigger. ME fuel oil leak alarm test. Leak sensor may vary from ships to ships. But the principle is the same. We will trigger this sensor electrically by activating the test switch, or you can do it mechanically if you have plenty of time. Both method is acceptable. Then alarm trigger. Generator leak alarm. Unscrew the circular nut to remove the sensor body. Then make the float contact to energize to trigger the alarm. To those asking if the leak alarm can be done also during engine operation, the answer is yes. Stop or running this testing can be done without affecting the operation of the engine. And also take notice has a delay so be patient. Cascade tank low level alarm. This testing can be done electrically by opening the normally closed contact. And you can do it by manually activating the float sensor inside the tank or manually filling the cascade tank. We do IT alternately for better results. Sewage high level alarm. Same method like in cascade tank can be triggered by opening the normally closed or by actual filling of tank. Both will give positive results, just do IT alternately. Testing of rescue boat. Very important to test this equipment regularly and ensure this functioning well for the sake of safety. And everyone on board must be familiar on how to start and operate this kind of equipment. This equipment may vary from ships to ships, but the principle and function is the same. This is used for rescue, so we will show you the procedure to start this. Preparation and procedure may differ from yours. This rescue boat can only start by manual crank start lever, none battery starter like others. Connect the fuel line from tank to engine. Confirm hose flow direction. Open the tank air vent. To avoid negative pressure inside the tank to allow air escape from tank, and to help priming the engine. Don't forget to attach the kill switch or whatever. You may call this. Start priming by manually pumping fan pump until hard. If the area is cold condition, you can choke first especially if it's your first start of the day. Crank the engine two to three, crank then you're ready to go. If you wish to prolong the life of your engine, take good care of the rubber impeller of your engine use for cooling. Of course, by providing cooling water, just like what you see on this video. Since battery is not provided in this rescue boat, you can only switch on the searchlight when the engine is running. As you can see the cooling water coming from the engine is the evident that your rescue boat's impeller is in good condition. You can adjust the RPM by operating the throttle level depends on what is needed during operation. If you wish to stop the engine remove the kill switch and then secure the engine. Testing of emergency generator. When starting the emergency generator you must check fuel valve open, lub oil level, battery to service position. If all is well and checked you can now freely start the engine. Be sure to read the instruction manual for starting procedure or with the person in charge. Put selector to manual. Pull the level thin start. During starting and running the engine you can check the parameters. If normal then you can stop the engine and secure this by reversing the starting procedure. Stop the engine. The testing is performed by our engine cadet Bong Bong Ora. Shout out Seo Ang Lupit Mo. 
When the stop solenoid is back to normal, you can now put the system to automatic position. That's the testing of emergency generator. Testing our free fall lifeboat engine. Switch off the source of battery cargo. Select battery you wish to on. For safety purposes, especially in cold climate, crank start is a must. To help engine lubrication spread inside the engine parts to lubricate them. That's a best practice for me. Crank start is when you start the engine while activating the stop lever level for the sake of lubrication the internal parts. To start select to preheat. For about 5 seconds then switch to on then start. See the RPM now starting. Test all lights. Operate the ahead and astern lever. Test the steering wheel, see the actual operation. To stop the engine pull the stop lever. Then put the start selector to zero position. Check fuel level. Check the engine. Open the bypass valve then operate. The emergency steering for testing. Return to original position the bypass valve for steering hydraulic jack. That's all for this video. I hope we learned something in this video. Don't get tired of learning. Don't forget to switch in the battery and charge. Thanks for watching.